Number 152 says, The shaded portion of the rectangular lot shown above represents a flower bed. If the area of the bed is 24 square yards and x equals y plus 2, then z equals what? So they're saying that this green shaded triangular area is a flower bed with area tw uh, with area as a uh, 24 square yards and they also tell us that x which is this line here or, or this line here uh, x equals y plus 2 so we also know that x equals y plus 2 so we are going to need to find z what is z well how do we even get started in this problem? Well, we know that uh, the area is uh, is 24 square yards, right? So the area, it would be x times y divided by 2. So x times y divided by 2 is going to be 24. Now, why is x times y divided by 2 24? It's because x times y would get you the entire square, but we're cutting that in half in order to create the flower bed. So what that means is x times y is going to be 48 because we've cross multiplied. Now, how do we find z from this? Well, they gave us that x equals y plus z. What happens, uh, oh, well, they gave us that x, x, or x equals y plus z. Um, what we can do now is uh, is actually substitute uh, x or y, y plus 2 as x into this equation. So what we end up with is y times y plus 2 equals 48. And we multiply, we get x, or y squared plus 2y equals 48. And we subtract 48 from both sides of the equation to get y squared plus 2y minus 48 equals 0. And now we factor. And what do we get? 6 and 8 equals 0. And when you set each of these equal to 0, you'll get y equals 6 and y equals negative 8. But we know that the length can't be a negative number because we're measuring an actual length of a, of a flower bed. So it's not going to be this one. So y equals 6. So now that we know that y equals 6, what is x? Well, we know that uh, x times y has to equal 48, so that means x equals 8. 6 times 8 equals 48. So far, so good. But now, how do we find z? Well, there are two ways to find z. You can either use the Pythagorean theorem, or you can recognize this right angle as a 3, 4, 5 angle. Remember in an earlier video, I talked about uh, having to memorize certain types of, of right triangles that just show up repeatedly, again, after... You know, time after time on the GMAT. This is one of them. A two, three, or sorry, a three, four, five triangle. Um, in this case, it's actually a six, eight, ten, because a, a three times two is going to be six, four times two is going to be eight, and five times two is going to be ten. So this is a variation of that triangle, and so the answer is going to be ten. Now, if you wanted to do this with the Pythagorean theorem, here's how you would do it. 6 squared plus 8 squared equals, well, I guess it wouldn't be x, it would be z, since we're solving for z, equals z squared. That's going to be 36 plus 64 equals z squared. You add those together, and you get 100 equals z squared, and then you get z equals 10. So it's the exact same thing. It's just, uh, if you recognize this triangle as a 3, 4, 5 triangle, you can very easily uh, find the answer, which is 10. And that is going to be answer choice E. On to number 153, which states, Jack is now 14 years old. So Jack is 14 years old, oh, well, Jack is now 14 years older than Bill, so Jack equals 14 plus B. If in 10 years, Jack will be twice as old, so Jack plus 10 years will be twice as old as Bill, so twice as old as, as Bill in 10 years, 
how old will Jack be in five years? J plus five is what? Now the tricky part about this question is actually this second equation that I wrote out. Remember that Jack plus 10 is going to equal uh, twice the amount of Bill plus 10. A lot of times people forget that you have to also add 10 years to Bill's age because it's not like Bill stays the same while Jack, uh, Jack gets older. This isn't, uh, you know, Benjamin Button. Anyway, 153. So how do we solve this? Well, first thing we want to do is plug in 14 plus 8 into this equation. And we get 14 plus, oh, not 14 plus 8, 14 plus B. My bad. Equals 2B plus 20. And you get everything on its own side. And you, uh, well, you know what? Let's add these together first. So B plus 24 equals 2B plus 20. Move the B over, move that over, and you get 4 equals B. So we know B equals 4. So we know that uh, Bill is 4 years old. Well, if Bill is going to be 4 years old, then uh, Jack is going to be 14 plus 4. Uh, Jack equals 8. He's 18 years old. So what is he going to be in 5 years? That's going to be 18 plus 5 equals 23. And 23 is answer D. 154 says, uh, an empty pool being filled with water at a constant rate takes eight hours to fill to three-fifths of its capacity. So eight hours uh, fills three-fifths of capacity. How much more time will it take to finish filling the pool? So how much more time will it take to get from three-fifths to five-fifths? Well, how much do you have to add? You're going to have to add two-fifths, right, in order to, make, to fill up the entire pool. Well, if it took you eight hours to fill three, how many hours will it take you to fill two? Let's set up a ratio. So eight over three equals x over two and cross-multiply. You get 16 equals 3x, and now we just solve for x. It's going to go into it five times, 15, 1, uh, and then uh, the answer is going to be 5 and 1 uh, third. Now in the answer choices, they give us 5 hours and 30 minutes or 5 hours and 20 minutes. So it's either going to be A or B. Now, a third, what's a third of an hour? There are 60 minutes in an hour, right? So a third of that is going to be what? It's going to be 20 minutes. So that's why the answer is going to be B, which is 5 hours and 20 minutes. Moving on to question 155. And 155 says a positive number x so x is multiplied by 2. And this product is then divided by 3. Okay, If the positive square root of the result of these two operations equals x, then what is x? So square root of this equals x. And x is what? The first thing you will want to do here is get rid of this square root. So we need to square both sides. And what we end up with is 2x over 3 equals x squared. Next thing we do is cross multiply, and we get 2x equals 3x squared. Now what do we do? Well, uh, what we can do is actually subtract 2x from the left so that we uh, get x on its own side. So our equation starts to look like this. Uh, then we factor out the x, and we get 3x minus 2. Now they've already told us that uh, it's it, that it, that uh, uh, a positive number x. So x has to be positive. So from this, we know that x is either going to be 0, or uh, if we set 3x minus 2 equals 0, x is going to be uh, 2 thirds, right? Because you add 2 to both sides and then you divide by 3. So it's either going to be this or it's going to be this. Now they already told us that x has to be positive, and 0 is, is, uh, is neither positive nor negative. So the answer is going to be x equals 2 over 3. And that is answer D.
Moving on to 156. A tank contained 10,000 gallons of a solution. Uh, that is 5% sodium chloride. So 5% sodium chloride. Uh, okay. If 2,500 gallons evaporate, so 2,500 evaporated, uh, the remaining solution will be approximately what percent sodium chloride? So 25% of water. So this original uh, tank had both water and NaCl. So it had 95% water and 5% sodium chloride. They're saying that 2,500 uh, gallons of water evaporated. So then what is the percentage left? Well, first thing we want to do is set up a ratio to figure out how, how much uh, sodium chloride was, was in the original amount. That's just going to be 5 over 100 equals your answer over 10,000, right? Get rid of the zeros, cross multiply, and we get x equals 500. So we know that the original sodium chloride amount is going to be 500. Now what happens if 2,500 gallons of water evaporates? Well, this becomes 10,000 minus 2,500. And that leaves you with 7,500. So now we take 500, we put it over 7,500, and we figure out what percentage is left. Let's get rid of the zeros, obviously. 5 goes into 75 how many times? 15. And then we cross multiply, and we get 100 equals 15x. And now we solve for the x. And uh, what happens when we, uh, what, what, what goes into, into 100? Well, 6, right? It's going to be 90, and that will get you 10, and it's going to be 6.6666, etc. Now, if you look in the answer choices, uh, the question, or the answer that they do have is 6.67, because they've rounded, and that's going to be answer choice D. Okay, the next question is number 157, which states, for any positive integer n, the sum of the first n in positive integers equals n, n plus 1 over 2. What is the sum of all even integers between 99 and 301? This uh, may seem a little tricky at first, but remember that we're looking for just even numbers first thing you will want to do is count the number of, uh, well, you know, since we're only looking for even, let's, let's turn this into 100, between 100 and 300, right? Because no one cares about 99, we're not going to count that anyway, and same with 301. They're just putting those numbers, uh, you know, writing the numbers like this to trick you. Anyway, 100 to 300. Now, how many different numbers are between these two numbers? There are 200 terms, right? But we are only looking for even, so we need to cut this amount in half. So what ends up happening is we know that there are 100 terms. But wait, we start with an even and we end with an even, so then we have to add 1 to it. Because we're not counting from 101 to 300, we're counting from 100 to 300. So whatever that half of that is, we add 1 to it. So we actually have 101 different terms that we're going to have to add together. Now all we have to do is figure out what, this, what the average is. And, uh, you know, we have to figure out what the amount um, in the very middle is, uh, the average, and then multiply by 101, and we have our answer. In this case, if we're going from, you know, 100 to 300, the middle number is going to be 200, right? So we take 101, and we uh, multiply it by 200, and we get 0, 0, 2 times 1 is 2, 0, 2. So we get 2, 0, 2, 0, 0. And that is going to be answer choice B. Awesome. All right. We'll see you in the next video.